Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to this webinar, DXF Converter. My name is Michael Wiendel. I'm a trainer for NC Programming and I would like to show you now this webinar. At first we are doing a little presentation for the theoretical part and the next step would be the um, programming with the DXF Converter on the programming station. So the DXF converter we can use with different Heidenheim controls, so with the ITNC 530, with the TNC 620 and 640. And there we have different functions depending on the um, NC software number and also the DXF converter is an option. This is the option 42 and this you can um, activate um, when you get in contact with your um, machine tool builder or also together with Heidenheim. So DXF converter we can use when we want to transfer the contours out of our CAD drawing into our program of the control. Um, we can use it in different um, programming types. Um, in our normal conversational program we can use the contours. So um, a contour will be saved with um, L and CC, so circle center and center or circle radius sentences in an .h file. And we can also save our machining positions, so positions for drilling, circular pockets, anything else, um, in a PNT file or also we can save it in a .h file. We will see later on the programming station. On ITNC 530 we have a special kind of programming, the so-called Smart NC, and there we have also special types there we use for the contours the .hc file and for the machining positions we use the .hp file. So these are two different file types which you only have when you work with Smart NC and this is on ITNC 530. But normally we use it in our normal conversational program and there we have it as contour with L um, with the contour description or with the machining positions in a point file or H file. So the settings of a DXF, the DXF file must be saved on the control. So you should transfer it to the uh, TNC directory. Also um, the file name um, is not allowed to put in any spaces or um, not allowed um, signs, so the only allowed sign is a uh, number, a letter, small or uh, capital, or you can use an underline or a minus. This is the only allowed um, values in a file name. Um, important inside of the DXF file there must be at least one layer. So with layer you can set different um, drawings on a layer and you can skip it or show it and the DXS, DXF file must contain at least one layer. Also the DXF file must be saved in R12 format. So this is a very old format and normally every CAD system can handle this format. So just um, when you say save as in your CAD program and you say save as um, DXF, just select the R12 drawing. You can also use the programming station just for testing if the DXF file can be opened in the programming station. Inside of your um, DXF you can use the following DXF element, the follow following elements. You can use a line, a circle, a um, circular arc and a polyline. Um, a polyline, when you have a um, drawing with a spline inside, then you can um, save the spline when you um, when you save the DXF file you can in the options you can set save the spline in polyline and then the spline cannot be handled by the control but um, it the control can handle the polyline 
So easily just save the DXF and tick on that the spline should be changed into a polyline. Okay, now we start with the functions of the DXF converter. So the main function, we can change the um, layer. So you see on the, on the right side, we have a view of our drawing and, on, and we also have a list, the list of layer. So and now it depends um, how the workpiece is um, constructed and if the CAD system uses the layer. So normally if the layers are correct, then you can say, okay, I have a layer for M6. And when you only activate M6, then you only see the positions of the M6 caps. So for this you can use the layer. So just um, show or um, uh, or not show elements on your drawing. We can easily select it by mouse, just take away the tick and then we can start with our, and then the, the drawing shows, um, just um, hides the values which are combined with this layer. The next step is, um, we just over jumped here one step. The next step is here um, the set datum. So we just um, click on the second symbol here and then we can just select two elements and set datum here. And after set datum we can choose a contour. So with the actual DXF converter you only need two mouse clicks to select a contour. So with the first mouse click um, you select the first element and the second mouse click um, will then close the complete contour. So the control will just do an automatic calculation in front and just um, shows us um, um, yeah, a choice what we want to do. We will see it later on programming station. So you only need two mouse clicks to select it and then you can save it in an .h or .hc um, format depends if you want to, um, if you have Smart and C available or not. And you can also um, copy it to the buffer memory. So just copy it to buffer memory and then you can go to the program and can directly insert it with um, insert block in your NC program. Here we see the window when we say we want to save it in a file, then we can decide if I want to do it in .h or we see here .hc if we have smart available. Select positions, the same. We can um, also select different positions from our drawing and there um, we can also save it in a PNT file in an HP file if we have smart uh, available and we can also save it in a .h file. So with a linear sentence X and Y and M99 for the positions. We will see later on the programming station. Then we have different symbols. Um, if you just um, make a zoom inside and you um, don't know where you are, then you can click on this symbol and then you are back again and you can see everything of your drawing. The same is if you press the um, right key, if you make a double click on the right key of your mouse, then you are also back again in the one-to-one -one, um, view. Then inverse you can just change the background from black to white or white to black. Then you can switch between 2D and 3D mode. For example, 3D you can use when you um, have a um, um, 3D DXF file, so with also a set coordinate inside, and you have a contour with 3D coordinates, then you can also choose this um, contour out of the um, DXF file. You can also switch between millimeter or inch, then the contour or the machining positions are just um, saved in millimeter or inch. 
you can also stay, uh, change the number of decimal places. For example, if you have a control which is older than 407, you can also use the actual DXF converter for contour programming and also machining uh, for the pos positions. And, but there you're only allowed to use three decimal places, so you can just change here the resolution. If you um, select a circle, normally the control always takes the circle center. If you activate this symbol, then you can also select the um, point at 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 or 270 degrees. You can also show the tool pass when you select um, machining positions, then you can show the tool pass, that's often good if you have a big workpiece and you want to see how the, um, the tool will go um, between the different machining positions. The next step, filter for positions. If you want to have only the diameter 5 positions, then you can easily use it. Just click on the symbol and type in, okay, diameter 5, and then the control only search after diameter 5 and undo or the undo function or redo. So if you um, delete something and you want to have it back, then you can do it with this button here. So what can we do when we have a contour or a machining position in our program? So. Um, an easy way is just we insert the contour in a sub-program and use it, for example, for an um, SL cycle or for a contour train um, to do the contour machining. We will do it later on the programming station. You can also use it with Smart NC. When you have an ITNC 530, there you use it in a unit where you can insert the um, contour and use it for programming. And you can also go directly in the program. So you let the program open. So the um, DXF converter opens on the third desktop and you can let it open and just change with the two arrows in the circle key and go back to programming and insert the contour. So this is not really theory, we do it later together on the programming station and then you see how we can insert it in a program. We have some further possibilities with the DXF converter. For example, we can insert a line. So this is our drawing, you see it on the right side. And in this drawing we want to insert the green line here. So this is not in the drawing. So I need to insert it. So at first I select the contour until this point. For this I click on the first element, then the contour makes the contour, the following contour green, the complete contour. So I stop at this point, so I click on this point, and then I delete the next element with the control and left mouse key. I can delete the um, selection which um, is automatically done by the control and then I can just select this element once again and now you see I get two possible points to connect and I just choose this point. So in the newest version I only need to press the shift um, the shift key on my keyboard and with this I can just easily connect it and then it looks like this and we have a line inside of a DXF which is not in the original drawing. For example, when I only want to do an, an, a new line or just a part of the um, drawing here. So the example what we want to do is the plate looking like this here. So we have here our PDF drawing 
And you see this is not um, um, the drawing is um, not with dimensions for the contour. It's only the um, dimension for the blank form, but not more. The next step is we will open. This is the PDF, and we will open the DXF file on the programming station and just select the contours in the machining positions and save them and then the third step we will insert it in our NC program to get our correct program for this value. And this we will now do on the programming station. So I just switch to the programming station. So we have here now the TNC 640 control but the um, possibility is the same with the um, 530 or 620. We have here the, um, the software 6, so an actual software version. And the first step we go to programming, okay? Programming and editing. And on my programming station I have now my different CAD formats, so I can use um, different information. So, for example, I can um, open my plate as an IGES file. IGES is the 3D model for my from my workpiece, and I can just look okay how is the workpiece look like okay I have here some drillings they go through okay I have here an inside pocket I have an outside island okay and I can also do a little bit measuring for example I just want to go for example okay what is this point here So I can just make a little um, mouse over with this element here, just to see is everything okay. I can also open it with a step file. Also possibility to do it with a step file and when I open it with a step file, you can see the control also recognize that there is a circle inside and I can just go with a mouse over and say for example okay, give me some information for this uh, circle. So, we make it a little bit bigger here. And then we can see here the informations of the um, middle point, for example, and also if available, then um, here we have set here the datum and here I have the um, middle point of the um, other drilling. So I can just make a little bit measuring in this 3D file here. But in this 3D file, I cannot choose any contour or any positions. I can only set a datum and after set datum, I can just go to um, um, just with a mouse over and I could do a little bit measuring. For example, when I want to know how deep the contour is, then I can make a datum here and I just make a mouse over here and I can see, okay, that is minus 10. So the contour is minus 10 millimeters deep. So this I can use just for an easy check for the dimensions of the workpiece. What we need is the DXF file. So this is our DXF and there are all my informations, the contour informations inside, but you can see the datum is at the moment at the um, left corner here um, on the corner of the workpiece or of the um, paper um, format and I want to have that the datum is in the middle of the workpiece. So I activate the datum here and I just click two elements. The first element 
the first here and the second. Okay, and then we have here the middle of these two elements. So just for example, when I want to do it here on the corner, I take the first and the second, and then I have here the corner. So the same I can do in the middle. The first and the second, and then I have it in the middle. So it's important at first set the datum in the same on the same position where you need it later for our machining. So if the blank form is from this position, then we also take the contour from this position. So always set the datum on this um, same position like you make it for our programming. So the next step is now contour, select contour. For this we will start, we want to start here and you can see the direction of the error is when I go on from the middle or on the right side then I go um, clockwise or when I'm on the left side then I'm against the clock. So just how you go on the the workpiece is just in different direction of your selection of the contour. So we want to do it clockwise, so I just click and now the control makes a um, calculation in front. So the control just um, looks what are the following elements and the control will just show me this elements here on the left side and I only need to click on the last value. Then I select the complete contour. So everything what is green I select only by clicking on the element and when I click for example here then the half of the contour is selected. So only the blue value is a selected value. When you click here then the complete contour is selected. I can also select it with the list here on the left side. So just click on the last element. If the DXF file is um, not well constructed, then it could happen that sometimes the um, this automatic um, calculation in front stops at the position. So then this position is more than this value here. This is the tolerance. Um, if the um, elements are have a distance more than one micrometer, then the control will stop the automatic pre, um, preposition here. So a preparation here and the automatic selection will not go on. So you can um, make this, um, this tolerance bigger and then just try again if everything is okay. So, the next step is now save this value. And for saving the value we have on the um, right side, um, on the corner, on the top corner here, we have the disk symbol. This is save the contour in a file and we have the clipboard function. There we just save the contour in the clipboard and we can insert the contour with our um, insert block key in the program. So with the outside contour we just save it as a um, file. So we just open it and then we get a window and now we can choose .h or, or .hc. So we have the conversational programming so we want to use .h and now we just give him a name for example this is outside. Okay, save. So um, the DXF converter is an option. So normally when you open a DXF file on your control and you do not have the option, the control brings out an error message that this file type is not allowed. With the um, latest version of the 640, the software brings not out an error message, the software opens 
the um, DXF file, and there are only, um, but then it's only a viewer, only a DXF viewer. So you can only select um, some items. Um, if you open the DXF file with programming station and you do not have a dongle in it, then you can select 10 elements. But you can also test the DXF converter. So if you have a programming station as a full version, then you can also select more elements. So now we saved the elements from the outside contour. The next step is now I want to save the elements from the inside contour. So we stay here with the cross, with the red cross here, I delete the elements and now I go a little bit inside and I just click on the first element and on the last element. And now the complete contour is selected. With a double click on the right mouse key, you came back to the one-to-one -one view. So now this is a um, um, polyline, what I select here, so a lot of small lines. You can see here, this is everywhere a line, so this is a polyline, and this you can also select with the DXF converter. So this inside contour we want to, to um, copy to clipboard with the two pieces of papers here. So now I have it in the clipboard, and now I just go to my NC program. I just prepared here a little program, and I have the label 2 here. It's for the inside contour, and there I just say insert block. And now the control saves the complete contour in my conversational program. So I want to work here with an um, SL cycle, so I only need to insert a radius correction. So I make, made it clockwise, so I need RR. And the outside contour I already have um, saved in a um, program, so this program I can also use with a program call, call program, select file, and here we have the, where is it, here is the outside. So there we can just um, take a look when we um, save it, that we save it in the same folder like we open the DXF, but we can also use this, Sam, T and C, outside, and there we have our program. So, also in the outside.h we need to insert a radius correction. There we, this is an outside contour, and we also did it clockwise, so there we have RL. So there are also another opportunity with the cycle 270. We, want, we will talk about this later, just to show um, how we can do it without changing the program here. So now we have our outside contour and our inside contour. And these two contours we can now use in our program. So at first we start here with our face milling. I use the cycle 233 for it, and here I now start with outside. And for this program, I choose, um, for outside roughing, I choose a face mill diameter 36, and I do the outside milling with a contour train cycle. So. This is the contour train cycle, so the milling deep is 9.8, that I have an oversize of 0 0.2 millimeter in the deep, and the same, I make it also for the 
allowance for side. So I start with plus 20 millimeter to put away all the material. Then I make the next step with the Q3, 0 0.5 oversize. And then the next step I make a roughing with a smaller tool to just clean the corners where the diameter 63 tools will not come inside. And the next step is then finishing with a diameter 16 tool. So the contour train, you can also um, bring in the data for the contour train with the cycle 270. So with cycle 270, we can change the type of approach. Here I say the approach should be with CT, circle tangential. The radius compensation should be RL. So now only the um, Cycle 270 um, gives um, the information of the radius compensation. Not interested what is inside of the program, only what the Cycle 270 says is now the um, important radius compensation. And then for our type of approach, the radius and the center angle. So with this cycle 270, we now change the behavior of all our following cycle 25 contour train cycles. So we go to programming and test run. So we go to test run here. And now I just start with single sentence at first the face mill. We can say further view. In gray colors, uh, okay, in colors, then we see the first two. Then the next step is our face mill. And can do it a little bit slower. So and now you see the contour, the first way. And what you also see, we have here an. Um, 20 millimeter oversize, and the same we can do in the next step. And now we have 0 0.5 millimeter oversize, but what you see here, we have a little damage. because the um, type of um, approach, the CT, is uh, not so good here, because you see what happens. It will just choose here the wrong direction. So what we can do, we can change the behavior here. We can say, for example, type of approach number two, and then we can just check if it's changing. Just start. So, also not so good here. You see, we have here a little bit damage because of the corner. So what can we do? We can just change a little bit our outside contour. This is possible because we are always inside of the of the conversational program. So this happens sometimes depends on the contour. For example, outside here. And now I say I will not start at I not want to start at x plus nine. I want to start at x zero and x zero. And then I just go to the last position and here I go to x0. Then this should be 
the correct way. Choose program. I think we just select the contour once again. I think there was something missing in the contour. And it's not a problem, we have it open here. So, for example, we can also not start at this position. Perhaps we start here. Save outside. Okay. And then We just check if it's okay. Two radius too large. Okay. So sometimes it's just the way to prepare it here. Um, so, outside. Okay, then. Just change the position where you started and now you see we have a good value here. Sometimes not so good to start it in an inside corner, but for this we have our programming test. And then we can start here. We're the okay. to 16, so with completely um, two ways with different side oversizes, and now we have a complete finished contour. You see it here in two different set heights. We have here the contour, and also in the radius, we have here a difference. So inside. The inside milling we are doing with a simple SL cycle. So we use the diameter 16 miller and there we have our cycle 14 with contour label 2. In the contour label 2 there we have our inside contour. Then we have the cycle 20, the cycle 22 and then also finishing for the floor and finishing for the side. Skip the values here. And so it's an easy way. And also finishing and finishing. So So this is the machining with the contour. So we can easily select the contour. If you work with um, um, contour train, then you need to be careful with which position you start the contour. But for this, we have our um, program test. And here we see also the finishing, the bottom finishing, and the side finishing. Okay, And the same here for the inside pocket. So, and now the next step would be the centering. So, centering for our machining positions, for our drilling, drilling positions here. 
And this I can also do with the DXF converter. For this I just delete the elements and I choose here select positions. Okay? And now I can use the value um, search after diameter. And now the control just shows me um, the smallest diameter and the biggest diameter. So I want to have the diameter 6 and I see, okay, this is 18 circles and now I see the movement between the circles are starting here, go up, go down here and go up here. So this is just a, um, a calculation behind what the control will automatically do. I can also make it in a different way. I just press the shift value and with the left mouse key I can open a window looking like this and then the control will only select all the drilling position what are inside of this window. And this I can also do with the next drillings here and also and then I can the um, I can also choose different ways. For example, when I do it um, like this, I make this drillings and this drillings, okay, and then I choose this drillings, and I can also choose it by hand. That I say, okay, I want to have this and then this and then this and then this, okay. But now I have a lot of um, a lot of confused ways, so I can use this key here, optimize the ways between the positions, and then the control will automatically sort it new. So this drillings I want to copy or to save in a file, and I use here my folder, and I say this is diameter 6 PNT. Okay, and the diameter 15 I want to use with my, um, also with a PAT file for example, so I delete it here and I say, I can click it like this, I say at first this and then this and this and this, or I can also use the search function, so this is an easy way to do it. Also save it diameter 15 PNT and then I can work it. So inside of this PNT file select type show all then we can also see it. Here I have now all my values the machining positions inside. So 18 drillings um, diameter 6 and 4 machining positions for diameter 50. And this I only need now to insert in my NC program. So, drilling, centering, and now I need to tell the control that she should use here the diameter 6. So, program call, select point table, select file, and then I just go to my folder and say here diameter 6, okay? And then for the drilling we can use the same and also for circular pocket we need to do the changings here. So, program call, select point table, select file, and diameter 15. So now the control knows which point tables you should use and with cycle call pet I call the last program cycle, the bore milling cycle, on every position which is defined in this point table. And the same we will do for our chamfering. Here we already have it inside and then we can just check our program. So at first the outside if 
if you want to get it here a little bit more faster, then you can um, go to mode and change the quality of the 3D model. Then you can, for so example, say low and then it's um, much more faster simulation, but then it's not so detailed and then the circles are not circles, there are more polygons and though I prefer here the um, highest um, the highest quality of graphic. So now we finished the workpiece here, so you see an easy way to bring in the drillings, an easy way to bring in the circular pockets and we can also use our information of the outside contour and the inside contour and the circular pockets for our later chamfering and we can make directly a chamfer also on our contour here. So, DXF converter is a good possibility when you um, have the, um, the digital drawing on your control. On the control you need the option 42 to handle it. Um, this you get from the uh, machine tool builder or from Heidenheim directly. Uh, you can, op you can um, use the contour elements or machining positions. If you um, zoomed in too deep, then you can go back with double click on the right mouse key, you come back again. And also a new function in the DXF, when you choose the contour and you start with an element here. So normally the contour output is with C, C and C. You have a key here it's C and then you can change it to CR and when you change it to CR then it happens that for example outside CR if you save it with C and CC then all the circles are just output with CC and C we have it here you see the circles are always in an output of CC and C. With the key C, so switch C to CR, you can just easily change that the circles should not be with uh, CC, the circles should be with CR. And then just an output for CR. You need this for example when you have a um, cylinder um, surface interpolation, there you need uh, the circle must be a CR and not a CC and C. Because of this you can now use also a DXF file for um, cylinder surface interpolation. And you can also use this programming station and the DXF converter for programming older controls. For example, you can also program with the um, with this DXF converter you can also create programs for a TNC 155 control. Of course the 155 control does not know the PNT table, but for this we have a um, possibility. We can say, okay I want to have this drilling positions, but I want to save it not as an PNT, I want to save it as .h. So as a conversational program, so diameter 6, and now these positions are saved in dot eight, um, diameter 6, dot h, and now you see linear x and y with m99. And this is a format which also can handle by a TNC 155 control, so you can also use the DXF converter for creating programs for elder controls. Okay, that's all from my side. Now we have our finished workpiece. We also have the, for example, our PDF. So that was the the drawing for this part.
And we also have our DXF. So together with our DXF converter, we can easily program this workpiece on our TNC control. Okay. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to use the um, questions field. And then I can answer also the questions here. So just use on your um, right side of the screen, use the questions field just for write in some, on some questions and then I can answer it. Okay, no questions then. If you have later questions, you can easily use our NC helpline. So just call um, or just write an email to um, 3103 at heidenhain.de and then you can just ask the questions or also phone my colleagues um, and then we can easily talk about this function here. Okay, thank you very much and we will hear us next time for the next webinar um, together here with the industry arena. Thank you very much and bye-bye.